Wheeling Plant Commission meeting for Thursday, April 11th, 2019 is called to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Mr. Secretary, please take a roll. Uh, Commissioner Blanova. I'm here. Commissioner Creech. Present. Commissioner Johnson. Here. Commissioner Kalis. Here. Commissioner Powers is here. Uh, Commissioner Yednick. Here. And Chairman Rafato. Here. Steve, any changes to the agenda? There are no changes for tonight's agenda. Thank you. Citizen so concerns and comments, Mr. Secretary. Uh, okay. Citizens so concerns and comments. Members of the public may address the plan commission with comments regarding only those issues that are relevant to the plan commission's agenda or topics that the plan commission is authority pursuant to village code to address. The chairperson or his or her designee shall strictly restrain comments to matters that are relevant to the plan commission business and shall not permit repetitious comments or arguments. Members of the general public who wish to address the plan commission must sign the request to speak form prior to the commencement of the public meeting. The person submitting a petition concern or other comments shall be allocated five minutes to present their points. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, Terry Stylin. Oh, I'm sorry. This, I'm, I'm sorry. It's Title 21. It was on the top. Sorry, sir. Hello. Uh, we have none. Okay. Consent items. Uh, docket number SCBA 1911 18T 335 West Dundee Road, appearance of wall signs. I'm going to bring that up so everybody can see that. Very nice. The globe. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Kalis, second by Commissioner Johnson. Mr. Secretary. Commissioner Kalis. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Blanova. Yes. Commissioner Creech. Yes. Commissioner Powers votes yes. Commissioner Yednick. Yes. And Chairman Rafato. Yes. Items for review. Docket number 2018-30, petition sent back from March 18th Village Board. House of Rental, 318 North Milwaukee Avenue, special use site plan approval of tool equipment rental facility with outside display or storage. Uh, Steve, anything? Uh, yes, yeah, just, uh, just to summarize real quickly. Um, well, I'm sorry, can we do a motion first to reopen Oh, the I'm sorry. You know, I was going to, uh, we need a motion to reopen. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Kayla, second by Commissioner uh, Powers. Roll call, please. Uh, Commissioner Kalis? Yes. Commissioner Powers votes yes. Commissioner Blanova? Yes. Commissioner Creech? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Yednick? Yes. And Chairman Rafato? Yes. Okay. Um, this was last uh, presented to the Plan Commission back in February 28th meeting, and um, based on the discussion, the motion uh, failed to receive enough positive votes. Uh, standard protocol is that that motion and the petition is forwarded to the Village Board for the final decision. Uh, however, before that, that time, uh, excuse me, the petitioner had requested that uh, they return to the plan commission to present some additional information regarding the fencing and some options and some additional material. And so uh, the village board had remanded this back to the uh, plan commission, which is uh, tonight. And um, I can then turn it over to the petitioner to present this additional information. But um, <clears throat> this is though a, a very narrow, dis I would consider it a narrow discussion because we're talking about the, uh, I guess, um, Mallory, the, the screening that we're, we are talking about here for is what we discussed at our last meeting. Yeah, so you've already had a full public hearing and heard all the evidence related to the special use petition and site plan, um, <coughs> made you know your recommendation, and they've asked to come back and reopen the hearing for the <coughs> limited purpose of the information they will be presenting, which is related to the fencing and screening. Um, and so there's really no need to rehash any of that old stuff and just consider <coughs> whether or not the new information um, 
changes your opinion, if you feel it meets the standards, um, you know, based on the new information of the special use. And so, yeah, you'd be focused just on that and specifically the Planning Commission's prior concerns about whether or not the screening was adequate. Okay, thank you. You put it very well. Thank you, Mallory. <laughs> thank you. I, could, I probably couldn't have done that. So, um, <clears throat> so you've been sworn in, but I don't believe uh, the gentleman next to you has been sworn. It wasn't at, at your, our <clears throat> last meeting, correct? Okay, so if you're if you're going to speak, I need to swear you in. Well, I'm an attorney, so. Uh, uh, so I still need to swear you in. So, <laughs> would you please? <laughs> I'm I'm very happy for that. But uh, do you swear that you, the truth? Do you swear the testimony you give tonight to be the truth? Yes. Alan, and if you can give your name. Alan Levin, L E V I N. I'm the attorney for. Uh, yes. And you've already been sworn in, sir, so if you can um, explain, and Steve, if you want to move to the next yes, sorry. Um, thing. Um, there we go. So you're coming back to us with a, another um, an idea for the um, screening. Well, <clears throat> when I first brought this up, we were, we were planning on just doing repairs to the fence and adding the top rail. So, you know, after getting proposals for, for different uh, items on there, we've decided that, you know, the best option would just be to replace that entire fence with a new chain link at six feet. Uh, instead of doing repairs, basically just to replace that 412 feet around the perimeter there. Um, so given that, we basically replace with new uh, fencing and the estimates for that, uh, we have come up, you know, to originally we had, I think, $3,000 for this kind of repair and estimate work. You know, right now it's at uh, 10500 to do a complete replacement. And again, if we want to add this mesh uh, screening, we have, uh, you know, 12, you know, I think another $1,200 in there. So the total project would come to 11750 somewhere in that area. So we have, um, you know, I believe this solution is in compliance with the Wheeling zoning ordinance requiring our fencing permits. Uh, we've also spoken with our, our neighbors and we've gotten written permission for this proposed fence. And uh, you know, I understand we're sensitive to needs and requirements of the village, but I believe we've, we've met those with, with this uh, paperwork here. I can present some copies to uh, Steve as far as our, our neighbors consent on the... <coughs> Mesh material and the sure. fencing. Sure, you can give them to Steve. <clears throat> and they requested that the uh, fence material be green, so I think both of them are on the same page with that. You know, one condition on there, our, our, our residential neighbor didn't actually have a problem with our existing fence, but, you know, he wrote in there, he hand wrote himself in there. Uh, we did speak with Starbucks as well, we spoke to them a couple times, but you know, the manager there, you know, manager wasn't there and the, the staff and stuff like that. They just said, oh, anything you do is great. So, didn't have any issues. This is a public hearing. Is there any, I'm sorry, is there anything else, sir? Um, no, other than that, we basically, you know, we're ready to get that work done. Uh, we've, you know, we have all our permits, we have, or we have all our paperwork ready to file. You know, talked with the fencing contractor, they're ready to go. If I can put that word into him tomorrow, we could have this project done in two weeks. Well, you realize that however we vote tonight, you still have to go back to the village board. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. You still have to go to the village board. Even our, our vote, irrespective of which way is, it goes, it still has to go before the village board. Okay. This, is a special, this is a special use hearing. It's a public hearing. And these types of hearings always go to the village board. Okay. Okay. So just so you're clear, so you can't, however this goes, if it goes <clears throat> for you, you can't get it done in two weeks. Oh, yeah. I was just saying we're trying to get expedited as right. fast as we can. You know, we just Understood. want to do, get this okay. project up and running. That's all. Great. Thank you. Sir, anything else to add? I really only have one other thing to add. I was not at the last meeting. I happened to be out of town. And I, but I did uh, see the video. And... There was one statement made, at least made that I heard, um, that the uh, village ordinance required 
a wood fence. And I, I frankly researched the village ordinances and any articles or any statements regarding fences. And I, I did not find anything that would require a wood fence to be built. Uh, I'm not sure of the exact uh, wording in our in our code, but that is our I believe that is our preference in, in our code as to uh, appearance and uh, our standards that we have for our village. Uh, so that's I have what a copy of the code on. if you want to review oh, it. Oh, we have. I, I have it too. I can look it up. I, I don't need that. I don't need it. That's fine. Um, but it it's also a question of whether it, it meets our standards for screening as, as to what we feel our standards for screening are. Uh, and and that is probably what, where we're going with this. So if you have no other comments, I'll bring it to the plan commission. So Commissioner Creech, <clears throat> uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Vano. Uh, Mr. Wright, you you appear to have br brought us the exact same uh, fencing and screening that you did previously. And it just doesn't provide enough adequate screening for, you know, your product on your property. And our, our, uh, our leanings was towards, you know, a, a wooden fence. So I, I don't see you presenting anything different to us. Okay, so <clears throat> again, on, the, on that screen, um, there's a bunch of different series, you know, there's 18 different series of this type of product. Um, on this one, we, I basically went up to a 500 level series that has a lifespan, you know, that's what I put in there. That one has a lifespan of seven to 10 years. Um, this product that it is, it's a vinyl coated poly. It's meant to be outdoors in all conditions, salt, road. You know, it's very durable. It's very color uh, stable. It's UV standard. Um, it has an 80% privacy blockage, which still gives the fence airflow, but obviously this is 80% um, blockage, which on a fence, again, is, is definitely acceptable. Uh, this is a premium product. Um, but it has to be acceptable to us. And my neighbors, actually. That's well, it has to be acceptable to the village. Of course. And we discussed this previously, and it was not up to our standard. And we voted on it. <coughs> and we recommended what we wanted, and we voted on it. And you're bringing us the same argument. Well, last time it was a, just a repair of the existing fence. I'm proposing to well, provide a brand new fence. Ms. Maluzzi, we're, we're getting into the point where we're, dis we're discussing this again. Where we said that we weren't going to discuss this again. Well, I, I think it was the discussion around the special use more so than the, but to, uh, but to take that a little bit further. Normally, I, I try not to interject when one of the commissioners is is speaking. I try to leave that towards the end. But our, our other concern was also the the, the material, the screening, and uh, none of us were I know were in favor of that. I think that's where you're going, Commissioner Creech. <laughs> Is the this yes. this screening was not um, was not adequate screening for us, irrespective of what was behind it, the existing fence or a new fence. So, with that said, Commissioner Creature, is there anything else? No, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Johnson. Thank you. Um, you mentioned ten thousand five hundred dollars for the new fence. Correct. But we were sent a quote. As part of our information of seventy nine eighty. So, so let's just call that eight thousand dollars, and then it's twenty five hundred dollars to remove the existing fence, and then plus the fence material that goes on top of it. Okay, that wasn't included in that quote. <clears throat> well, I believe the last time we left you to consider a compromise of doing the wood fence on the strong side and between you and the residential. Um, I don't know what that would amount to. We weren't as concerned about 
the north side, other than just cleaning it up. But I believe that's how we left it the last time, and I don't know. So um, let's say that the product that I'm proposing is about $27 a square foot, where wood is forty-four fifty a square foot. So that's almost double the cost of the fence to do that. And then again, the again, I'm not, yeah. Well, I'm against the mesh. Um, I appreciate that you asked the neighbors and it's a poly coated vinyl. <clears throat> Anything else, Commissioner Johnson? No, thank you, Commissioner Powers. Um, thank you. Uh, I do appreciate the the fence replacement. Um, I appreciate the upgrade of the screen. I'm, I'm still not in favor of the screen. And the company that does provide the screen also uh, does provide slats for the fence. Have you checked into that at all? Yes. And your feeling on that is? Uh, slats are about $14 a foot. So that would add another considerable amount. Well, I think if you had a six-foot fence, I, I, I was like checking on the vendor's website. It's it's probably like another fourteen hundred dollars. I don't know. Slats to me would be a little bit better than a mesh. I I don't know of anywhere in the village other than like baseball fields and stuff where they have the mesh and um, and it's going to fade. And I'm just not in favor of it. So that's where I am right now. Thank you, Commissioner Kalis. <coughs> no question. Thank you. So on slats, you'd want to see slats from. I mean, it's just a different Starbucks option. It's strong. better for me. It's. I mean, I think we do have some fences around here with slats. I think what you have in there is slats, and just clean, maybe clean it up, and that may be a little bit. Possibly, I, I may lean in that, in that direction a little bit more than uh, just a mesh. Yeah, I could. I could do. We could do uh, a slat option in green from Starbucks, strong and residential. So if I did the new fence with the, with the vinyl slats on those three areas, would that be acceptable? We will, once I, um, once I get done with everybody, I will uh, propose a poll to see if everybody's agreeable with that. I will do that, sir. Uh, <coughs> Commissioner Kalis, you had no questions. Uh, Commissioner nope. Yednick. Yeah, um, last time I voted yes because uh, I don't want to deny a longstanding business the right to, to operate in the village, but I was, again, I was not in favor of the mesh screening either. I think it looks like a temporary construction site. Um, since you went, I appreciate that you went and you're looking at replacing the whole fence. While you were doing that, did you look in, uh, at any other options or price any other options that might have been more aesthetically pleasing? I mean, I mean we, there was objection to the chain link fence last time, and I'm surprised you didn't maybe come with some other options. Did you look at anything else? I did, but on, again, on a security level, there, you know, wood and things like that just don't hold up for what we, for what I would need for that property. I, I, I personally, I don't think I can agree with that argument. I think that there's a lot of different options that could be just as secure. I mean, it's, it's, it's only a six foot fence. I mean, you're not topping it with barbed wire and things like that. So it's not going to be a hundred percent secure. Well, no with like what. snow removal and things like that, um, even wood fence wouldn't really hold up for, for that kind of stuff. Okay, but so you didn't price any of that, you didn't look into that at all, since you're now replacing the whole fence? I did, it's, it's just again, you know, even higher than, than the estimates that we already have. Okay, well, that's all the questions I have. Commissioner Bonova. Thank you, I have nothing, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, I, I also uh, was not in favor of the mesh and ir irrespective of what was behind it, rebuilding the fence or your last proposal was f to keep the existing fence and, and uh, just putting the mesh over it. What you're, what you're doing is you're going to replace the fence, which is a good thing because that actually was in, in bad shape and probably should have been replaced well before now. But the, the issue is that it's, it's the mesh 
and from our standpoint, that's not the type of screening, the adequate screening that we desire. So we have uh, Commissioner Powers brought up um, the question of slats. Um, is that I'm going to, add, let's see, I'm trying to figure out how, how simply I can get a yes or no answer from everybody. Um, because unfortunately, even if we are yes, I would, we would need to see those before we, uh, before we <coughs> voted on them. But I, I don't want to get somebody's hopes up high to bring them back if we are not in favor of them. So with that said, uh, I'm, the question I'm going to ask is, w um, would you as a commissioner be opposed to presenting slats instead of the mesh? Uh, Wait, opposed to? Okay, uh, so. Would you be uh, agreeable, I guess? Okay. Agreeable to substituting the slats, which I guess are existing right now, to the mesh. So, um, uh, Commissioner Creech. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> Commissioner Yednick. Um, can you give me a minute? I'm trying to bring up the website. I wanted to see what it looked like. Is there, do we have? Well, it looks like what's on the screen. Um, well, that's kind of beat I mean, up. No, yeah. Those just... slats are like plastic PVC, yeah, and then they come in colors. Uh, in this case, the green. So would it's be... interwoven through the fence. Yes. yes. Um, and what are the existing ones? Are they plastic? No, those are metal. Um, so on on the slat type of fence, there's a bottom rail that holds them all at the same height. You know, there's a plastic thing that they slide into, and they lock into this bottom piece. You can either have it on the top or the bottom. Um, depending on the fence contractor, whatever he would recommend, I'd put that so that way they all stay uniform. Uh, and again, I'd probably just go with the green PVC just uh, for the for that color choice that the neighbors had. Um, again, I, I would prefer not, but if that's the best we're going to get, I, I, I need a yes or yes no. Or no. <laughs> I, I need a yes or no, not uh, yeah. Uh, the, then I would say yes, I would accept it. Uh, Commissioner Johnson. Looking at the existing ones, I see a lot of broken pieces and everything. Um, I'm sure the vinyl ones are gonna end up the same way, so I'm gonna say no. Commissioner Powers. Uh, even though I <laughs> mentioned that I'd really still like to see cedar, so I'm gonna say no. Uh, Commissioner Kalis. No. I'm sorry, no? No. Okay, and uh, Commissioner Blanova. No. And I would be a no also. Um, so neither one of those are, are acceptable to us at this point in time. So does anybody else have any other questions? No? Do we have any no. composite fences in the village? I know they sell panels, composite panels. I don't, I don't even know if that would be acceptable. Do you know, Steve? Um, it's likely that there may, there's, I wouldn't be surprised if there were some residential fences out there that were constructed of composite. Um, those are reviewed by the building department, so we don't see them at the planning side of things. Um, the um, the uh, enclosure, the trash enclosure areas for Arbor Court, the white vital, those are composite. They're, they're not high quality composite, but it is a, as we plan commission saw previously, an alternate material to to the wood, um, but that's that's one example, a non permitted example. But, but I thought those were just vinyl. Those are those are vinyl, but it's a it's it's a option, I, an alternative to wood. I yeah, think Commissioner least. Powers is thinking something like on this uh, from standpoint of like trex. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, there may be some residential fences out there. I'm not thinking of any commercial. Commercial. Ones, right? and most of the commercial ones I'm aware of are wood, or uh, in industrial areas, it's more common to see the the um, chain link. And they, the composite stuff would probably be more expensive than cedar. Most likely, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, it's been proposed. Do I hear um, a motion for docket number two? I'm sorry, would you like to add anything more, sir? I have one thing I have to say is that. Can, can you um, speak, speak into the microphone? Sure. Um, you, can move, you can move the microphone. <clears throat> There you okay. go. Uh, just uh, the only thing I have to say is 
So in essence, my client has presented two alternatives. So if both alternatives are being denied, I just would like that to be stated for the record. One alternative was all uh, was the metal fence with the mesh, and the second alternative that he offered tonight was the vinyl slats as an alternative to the mesh, as I understand it. Well, we're our motion is playing this packet. Our, our motion is mo most of our motions are uh, around approval, so I'm not certain how I. So we make a motion to approve this docket. Um, can we add, Mallory? How can we add that? I, I'm, I'm certain. It, I'm not certain how the vote is going to be. I mean, the vote for this, the motion will be on the proposal on the presentation as submitted in the record, which um, is the which is the vinyl. You took a consensus to see if there'd be any interest in the slats, which right. didn't. So I guess if the if the proposal wanted to change to show the slats that have to be supplemented in the record, but there's no actual depiction of it with information other than some oral testimony. So your motion will be on the on, on what the, was proposed, on the mesh. right? But isn't it the entire site special use? Yes, it's yes. both. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, right. But the plan in front of you is right. the mesh. Right. So. Uh, back to the docket. Uh, do I hear a motion for docket number 2018-30, House of Rental? So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Creech, second by Commissioner Johnson. Mr. Secretary. Commissioner Creech. No. Commissioner Johnson. No. Commissioner Blanova. No. Commissioner Kalis. No. Commissioner Powers votes no. Commissioner Yadnick. Yes. And Chairman Rafato. No. So, sir, it's, it's the same vote, but again, we are a recommending board. And this this will go before the board when um, Mallory probably May sixth. Yes. Yes, that's correct. May sixth. So um, we'll have something for you to sign. And um, May sixth is the meeting where where this proposal will be submitted to the uh, plan commission. I mean the village board. We have two things for you to sign again. Right here and there. And you can keep the bottom one. Thank you for your power cord. You can keep you. Thank you, sir. And I'm sure Steve alive. will get back to you as to when. Yes, I'll be in touch on the, right. the board meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a motion to close 2018-30. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Docket number 2019-10, Village of Wheeling text amendment for sign code. Mr. Secretary. What am I reading? Just the village. This oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Okay, sorry about that. Docket number 2019-10, Village of Wheeling applicant seeking a text amendment to Title 21 signs of the Wheeling Municipal Code. Chapter 21.07 special use signs to add institutional uses to the list of uses permitted to install an electronic message center sign. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, Steve, you're a staff. I am staff, yes. Steve. I think I probably have to swear you in. Okay. Please raise your right hand. You swear the testimony you give today to be the truth? I do. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, staff has. Uh, presented some sample um, electronic message centers or EMC is short just as a, a reference to what we're referring to for the audience and the plan commission but essentially uh, staff is proposing modifications to the uh, sign regulations that would permit uh, religious assembly uses to install these uh, electronic message center ground signs. Um, EMC signs for short are, are signs which, which use a, a series of, of lights typically now LEDs that can be individually lit uh, to form copy or images or, or graphics um, in, in place of a static sign. Uh, EMCs are permitted through uh, two different sections of our sign code currently. 
Um, the first section is uh, regulations for freestanding signs for properties that are zoned commercial or industrial. And there's uh, specific regulations for those. Uh, the second um, criteria or um, option for EMCs is uh, regulations pertaining to signs to approved special uses. And that is regardless of the zoning district. Uh, specifically, those are um, uh, government buildings, um, convention centers, uh, schools, libraries. Um, in this case, um, staff was recently contacted by an existing church seeking to install an EMC sign. In staff's assessment of the code and, and looking through the regulations, um, the regulations omit religious assembly uses from the included list of uses that can install an EMC. Uh, however, in reviewing uh, the uses allowed to have an EMC sign, um, staff feels that, that there are comparisons between religious assembly uses and schools and government buildings, for example, that um, si their signage needs are similar uh, in that they need to convey multiple messages to, to the community or their users uh, due to the variety of services that they <coughs> offer. So from a signage need standpoint, uh, that's where we feel that, that's where staff feels that they are comparable. Um, as a result, um, all the regulations would remain the same, um, so there wouldn't be, uh, in terms of size, location, uh, uh, sign plan review, all of those requirements would remain the same. It would just be adding religious assembly uses, permitted assem religious assembly uses, um, to the opportunity to install an electronic message center. Um, with that, I'm available for any questions. From just, a, uh, just a general comment. The, the picture in the lower right-hand corner, is that meant for us to be anything? Uh, confession time? <laughs> no. Is that no. for us as, uh, we go, as we go through this or what? These were, <laughs> these were uh, some signs that I just pulled up as examples. These are kind of the, the, best, okay. the, best, of the, uh, the best of the rest. Just wanted to make sure. <laughs> also not a high school conference for you. Right. right. <laughs> um, this is a public hearing, and uh, Mr. Stylin. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear the testimony to give tonight to be the truth? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, yes. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Terry Stylin, 473 Briarwood Drive, Wheeling, Illinois. Yes. Um, I have a problem with the uh, proposed sign code text amendment. Now, I really haven't had the opportunity to look into uh, your docket at all to see the particulars of uh, the docket, all I saw was basically uh, some simple, we're going to allow it. Um, I'd like to make some comments. The PC has approved many religious assembly uses over the past 40 years. Many of you have been involved with a number of those uses. However, there's one use that was made many years ago that bothers me. It was a house, a small residential house near 83 and McHenry Road. Jim, Don, I don't remember if you were on the commission when that uh, came before us, but it was approved as a church. They only had a uh, congregation of six people. There parking, their, their lot was, uh, I don't know, half acre or maybe even a full acre. But it was an old house, plenty of room on the site for uh, uh, enough cars to support six, uh, a, a congregation of six. They got, uh, they got approved, they got property tax relief, they held services once a week. I have nothing against churches. I think I probably voted for it as well. But could any of your houses be declared a church as long as you meet the special use requirements to be a church? Mm -hmm. Many of our churches are in residential areas, surrounded by residential houses on all sides. Do we really want to have a permitted electronic reader board sign? Are there any restrictions on how large the sign could be? If we're going to follow the normal sign code, right, it could be 
umpteen by umpteen. You show, you show a very small sign, that would be nice, but I don't know that on a permitted use you can put restrictions to limit size, <coughs> color, brightness, the, the text that goes on the sign. Can you limit the text to religious use only <coughs> for the Turk, for the church? Could they advertise businesses next door? What are the real limits of a permitted special use on that kind of uh, facility? Should you consider things like congregation size, building size, property size, sign size, things that maybe you would consider as part of a larger site plan, but there was a site plan for the small single family house church, held services, I believe, in their living room, and it was approved. I don't know if it's still there. Anybody know? McHenry Road and uh, uh, 83, next, just... It's, ne it's next door to me, but I've never noticed it. I didn't know just, it. Uh, just west of the, <clears throat> oh, what are those apartments? Sure. Uh, right yeah, there. There's, the, so there's next, a single family between, yes. Next to the park? Or? Yeah. Between the park, that's a big white house. I've never, big white house. Yeah, is that, no, is that way back? Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, I think there are, I, I would have a lot of questions well, about what kind of restrictions you can put on a permitted special use. Permitted to me says they can go and do it whatever they want. And I just think that maybe you need to be a little more cognizant of things that are going to be in a residential area. Schools are typically large parcels, churches typically large parcels, um, government buildings, typically large parcels. Anyway, I think these questions ought to at least be discussed before you guys take any action, especially the permitted aspects of it. So thank you very much. Thank you. Commissioner Powers, let's. Uh, oh, thank you, Mr. Steinler, for that. That was um, pretty good. So, are we looking just to add uh, religious assembly use into the, the grouping of, with everybody else, and then whatever um, standards for sign usage and size of signs, et cetera, that would, if that special use for religious assembly is permitted then they have the same privileges for signs as those other uses is that kind of what we're saying here that's correct if you by adding this uh use to that list of of um, uses then uh it would be um it would they would qualify for a sign they would have to meet the size limitations of the code the setbacks um there are um requirements on the duration of of this, the message that can be displayed, um, no longer, no less than 10 seconds. Um, you know, signs can't; these types of signs can't have any strobing or sounds or anything of that nature. So they would be subject to the same regulations of these signs as those other uses that are currently listed and currently allowed. So if 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 a petitioner came in. But this, the special use got approved and they came in and w said, okay, and we, we put this in and then the, the um, petitioner comes to us for electronic side, if it is signed, if, it, if that sign meets what's in the code, we, we, cannot, we cannot deny it because normally it would come to us on consent. So in that case, we, is there a possibility we could, could deny it or, or we're tied to it because it's in the code? Uh, if it met if it met all um, all the criteria of the code, then um, the signs that do go up, come in front of the plan commission are for appearance review. So you'd be able to comment on the appearance of it, but the um, the actual existence of that sign would, would and the size up. of it and all of that. that would, would all as be, long as it met what was in the code, it'd be correct. acceptable. Correct. Correct. 
And that would come actually probably through consent, right? Right, and that's what yes. I'm thinking too. Yes. That's correct. That's correct. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say right now. I mean, because that, that 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 is a good point. I, you know, how to? I, I guess electronic message. I mean, we we have a lot of those in the village. How do you control what what people put out there right now? You re, you really don't have control. They can basically do what they want. So it's like I, I don't even know if that's there's any kind of enforcement around what is displayed on a sign, um, unless there's a complaint lodged. So. Right now, I don't have anything else. I'm, I'm, uh, I have to think about this one a little bit. Thank you. Commissioner Kalis. Thank you. Um, do we know, besides that one house on 83 in McHenry, are there other, I mean, what's keeping a, a res, is code keeping a residence from also becoming a school? Um, so the, um, any property that is applying for a special use would, um, be required to meet the standards as well as the, the standards for the special use as well as the um, minimum requirements uh, of that use. So there may, there may be lot size requirements, there may be parking requirements, okay. uh, all of that nature. So for a religious assembly use, for example, there are parking requirements based on the number of seats and they would have to, that use would have to demonstrate that they provide the sufficient parking, yeah. um, things of that nature. And so um, uh, not, if, if a private resident wanted to do that, they would have to demonstrate that they are able to, to not only meet the standards for the special use, but also the, the, the code standards in terms yeah. of all of the, the parking and um, building regulations and everything. Right. Because somehow, maybe code was different back then when they got approved to be a religious assembly in a house. Uh, but if it could happen again, seemingly, then I don't, I don't know how we can treat one differently than the other if 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 the if it's the desire to as of the village to reconsider the electronic sign code across the board that's fine for me but to to say that religious assemblies can't be part of it because you don't like it um like it has to be in in my perspective it has to be like it should be equivalent for all um schools government uh, religious, and if there's a problem with that, then that's a separate discussion. Um, that's my my perspective. Um, uh, yeah, I would I would jump in and say that you shouldn't really distinguish on the uses. The right. distinction might be on the zoning district, um, right? Residential zoning districts versus commercial or industrial. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't separate it based on the use. Yeah, the uses uh, are the uses. Yeah, use is a touchy. Right. Is it going down a different rabbit hole. Yeah, I think, you know, to take an, an example that's an outlier is valid, and it's, it's a, you brought up a fair point. Um, I just don't know that that's like a giant concern around here. Uh, who knows? Um, but um, I was curious about the size limitations, so we, we addressed that. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Commissioner Johnson. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I have an idea of, of what church is asking about this. Uh, and I was surprised that they weren't in the same zoning um, as synagogue over there because that one came to us and it was a consent item and it just flew right through. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't have a problem with any of these electronic message boards unless they're going to affect somebody that lives very close by. Uh, looking at a map with the known churches <laughs> in Wheeling, yeah. um, the only one that really would be questionable is Evergreen Presbyterian, which is over by Holmes, because it's on a side street. Whether or not they would ever invest in such a sign, because not there's cheap. not much traffic to get their money's worth out of it. Um, Everybody else is on at least secondary streets, if not main streets, so I, I wouldn't have a problem with that. That's all. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Creech. I have no concerns at all, thank you. <coughs> Commissioner Blanova. Thank you. 
Yeah, when it comes to religion, we have to be inclusive <laughs> and um, not disrespect anyone. But at the same time, cautious, because it has to have some kind of limit of what can be um, posted. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I don't have any other concerns. Thank as you. long as it's not disrespectful. Commissioner Yednik. Yeah, um, I'm in agreement with Commissioner Kalis uh, that, that I think <coughs> if we're going to allow for some groups based on a logic of that they have, uh, you know, frequently changing messages or something like that, that how could you exclude religious groups? But in general, I'm not a fan of electronic signs because of the aesthetics of them. Um, I know that AMVETS got one a few years ago, and I think you guys did an exception because of the setback, if I remember reading the minutes correctly. I might be getting it wrong. And I live right next door to AMVETS, and that thing is bright. Yeah. And it's obnoxious. And, and the, the content, the way they display their messages, you can barely read them. I'm surprised that I haven't gotten complaints from some of my residents in our condo that live right next door to that thing, that it's got to be almost like living next door to a billboard, and that I would consider, you know, in a residential area. But I think maybe from an electronic sign standpoint, we should be looking at the code and maybe trying to regulate the aesthetics and the brightness and, you know, like the signs that are up here, the one with the kids partying, you know, if I lived right next door to that, that would probably be really bright. The other ones are just giving messages. It's text, you know, like a, a white text on a black background. <clears throat> That's, to me, something that I would rather see. Um, but again, I don't think I could object if we're going to have them just adding it as a group. Uh, I don't think I would object to that. The way I think Commissioner Kalis stated it very well. I'm wondering if we could take a look at how we could regulate the aesthetics of electronic signs if we're going to have more of them popping up. And, and I think, I believe that this is a discussion. This is the first time we've seen this, so uh, it, it's not a single, doesn't have to be a single meeting. You know, any of our discussions are not just single meetings. We turn them into because we have, we have good staff reports, but something like this that comes up, it could take multiple. We, we don't have... And one of the questions I asked, and I'm sorry, Commissioner Gettnick, I'm interrupting your time. No, no, I was talking One of the discussions that yeah, thank you. I've had most, most of our text amendments have come before us with a petitioner standing right before us, and they're actually generating the text amendment. And uh, there's always, there seems to be this, this urge to get it done at the same time <coughs> we're doing a text amendment than possibly a special use or whatever behind it. In this case, we, we have time to discuss, discuss this. There has not been a petitioner that has specifically asked for it, though I'm sure uh, the re religious establishment has informally asked about it. So that's where, that's where we're at with it. So we, it's not something that we have to rush into, and maybe we do need to look at the uh, the code for electric electronic mess messaging. So, with based upon that, um, I, I'm sorry. Anything more? No, no. Thank no. you. Uh, yes, Commissioner. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Rafato. Um Steve, this is more towards you. I I was at the understanding that we do have a brightness code or a way to regulate the brightness of signs from one property to another. Do we not? Yes, there there are brightness um, you know limitations um, for that. So all signs would have to make sure that they're not directing light at if it's an externally you know if it's a ground mounted light, or, they have to make sure that it's not pointed directly at someone's property. There's also uh, light limitations at the property lines. So there are um, there are uh, regulations like that. The challenge with 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 electronic message center signs is that um, they cast a larger kind of sign, you know, they, they, cast, they cast more vis visual light because of how much brighter they are and they're not just a static light that stays the same, like a standard internally illuminated sign. So when you naturally have changing, when you have one sign message change to the next, it's going to, you know, it's going to dim the case, bright. In the case of the VFW hall, mm -hmm. if it is too bright, it, or if someone complains that yeah. it's too bright, right. 
there's a way of checking we it, could, and then could, it right. could be uh, addressed, correct? Right. Correct. I'd the be other, surprised yeah. if it's not. I mean, I walk my dog now, and I go all the way to the far end of Childerly Park and look behind the condos, and it looks like that sign is almost right next to me. The, the other it. thing that a lot of a lot of communities um, are starting to require is more and more these signs are becoming more prevalent is um, having ambient light sensors. So as the light, as the ambient light adjusts, if it gets brighter, then it'll it'll um, increase the brightness of the sign to compete with the brightness of the of the ambient light. As it decreases, it'll decrease the it'll decrease the illumination of the sign as well. So obviously, the older signs may not have this technology. Um, the cheaper signs may not have that technology, but something something if we look at the code in return. So that could be a requirement in yes. signs going forward, correct? Correct, correct. It's like an automatic dimmer requirement. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Uh, so my my comment about this and before Commissioner Stylin uh, pointed out and uh, Terry, I don't think I was not Commissioner, uh, former Commissioner Stylin. Terry, I don't believe I was on the plan commission when 83. I would have remembered that. Um, <laughs> but my concern was similar to what you had. And uh, and actually, schools fall probably fall under the same thing. And we permit that. <clears throat> in, in my neighborhood, we have a uh, grammar school. It's right in the middle of a residential area. <clears throat> and it it's in back of residential homes, but if they happen to put a reader board right there as you're coming in, that would shine into the back, uh, the back of two or three houses, and that's a school. So my concern is that is is how they can be treated and how we can, if we do something, <clears throat> can we limit the hours that they're on? In, in in these areas in residential in a residential area and I, I'm I'm not certain I haven't looked at what AMVETS is if that's residential I would assume it is uh, but there's a church right next door to it if so if that's residential um, and in reality a school could go into a home mm -hmm. they could have they could designate them as a school and I know of a house in our neighborhood that has people gathering for uh, religious services. I don't know if they're designating themselves as a church. I, re I you know, if they gather on a weekly basis as, as a group, and that that's fine. But if they turn it around and say, "I want this to be a uh, religious assembly," now I know there's certain. Code requirements, as you mentioned, parking and you know the number of toilets that they need in the house to have this. So that might limit it, but there is that concern. And Terry, thank you for bringing that up. I was I was just I was thinking of it being close to residential homes, but then when you put the extra light on of it of a house that could potentially be a school, is is that possible? I, I guess. We would need to look at the, the code right now for religious assemblies, government, for, for the uses in residential areas, and what are the, what is the code there? Not only religious assembly, but government buildings or schools, particularly schools. Um, so I, I, th I think this needs a, a little bit more investigation, and can we limit can we limit the signs uh, to um, to uh, times? And I know uh, Commissioner Creech mentioned that we do have brightness code in there, but can more be put in there as to the ambient uh, signage that you talked about and specific kinds that don't maybe display brightness of it? Uh, we could look into that. Now, uh, Mallory, I know how, I'm not certain how we do this, but I know we can, um, if there's a rebuttal from the public that they want to mention something again, can we bring them yeah, up again? Yeah, you can bring them back up. You have the discretion. Yes. Okay. Mr. Silent, would you like to come up again? Again, the only other thing that I'll add is there are a number of 
entities within town that have electronic reader boards that were installed were granted installation by the village but were not part of the code. I think the synagogue is probably an example, right? It's a church, but it managed to get an electronic reader. But it's not residential. Because, it's, because it was in, there's certain sections of the code which zoning commercial right. and industrial. If you're, if, you're a commercially, if you're a commercially or an industrially zoned property, by right, you're allowed to have an EMC. Okay. Regardless of your use. Then, then I would say, well, even so, even if they're not permitted in the special use code, it doesn't mean that a site can't come in and ask for a variation. I think that's how many of the electronic reader boards that were originally installed were installed as part of a variation request, not as part of a permitted, not permitted, whatever use. I would think that for the small number <clears throat> of churches that might want to bear the expense, a variation might be a, a viable alternative because then you can control all those functions and features. But that's just a suggestion. So thank you for allowing me the thank opportunity. You. So taking a more uh, a different approach to the, making any, if, if somebody wants a EMC in a residential area, make it a special use make it a something that's not permitted that they would have to come before us. I think we need to look into that. Yeah, I think that's a good option. Yeah. Take all of this, change this completely. Now, I'm not certain how often you would have a hotel in a residential area without any <laughs> zoning or a theater, but. So if you could, Steve, if you could please look into that. Stephen Mallory, I would appreciate that. Could even be a governmental headquarters for politics. I mean, it could be anything in a house, technically. You know, the, the, the one thing that we, we forget is that in order for them to request that, they're going to have to go through a lot of hoops. Yeah. to request a hotel in a residential area. <laughs> Most likely they're going to have to ask for rezoning and a variation. So, so the, 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 the logic of those types of uses being in residential are slim, but they still do exist. You have like a bed and breakfast. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, right. Maybe we need to rethink our whole, that from an EMC perspective, we need to rethink that. And that's the reason why this was brought up now. Mm -hmm. So, um, we have an opportunity here. Let's move with it. So, okay. So, do we, um, any other questions or comments? Do we need to uh, table this? Yes, table. Well, well. I, if you don't want to republish the notice, I would continue to continue. Date certain. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, how, Steve? What would you like? You're the uh, you're the petitioner here. What would well, you I like? Guess for I guess I have one comment, if I could. I, I did find a definition of religious assembly in the code, and I think maybe that needs to be rethinking of how we would want to word it in this change. Because this is pretty broad, and somebody brought up a point of, you know, they live in a neighborhood where just people get together informally, and this religious assembly, you could almost define that that informal group it would qualify, and then they could put an electronic signboard out in front of well, them. Well, but they would have to formally they still have to get a special use. Special to but they would have to formally assembly. get a special use for that. They, you can say that, you know, Steve and I get together. Well, I mean, and like a Bible study group wouldn't qualify because this the, the but, definition. But they have to formally request to be a religious assembly. Okay. okay. They have yeah. to get in order to be eligible to receive an electronic messaging center sign. You have to actually already have the special use approval for the religious assembly or government mm -hmm. building or school. Right. Mm -hmm. So just because you have 
people informally meeting for Bible study at someone's house wouldn't automatically qualify for okay. the sign. Okay. They'd have to go through the whole special use procedure and have that property designated as a religious assembly. And okay. that's you can get around the taxes. Well, the, well, this, the, well, yeah, this is just kind of broad. Nobody and, would do that. Yeah. It sounds like it would just mean that if I said my Bible study group is a religious assembly, that I, I automatically qualify. But you're saying that's not the case. I didn't understand. Could yeah, be the could. case, but probably not. But if that special use does get approved, a lot of times we get special uses. We don't see, we don't, we, we assume they're coming to us with a signed package. We don't know what type of sign they're coming to us with. So right. do we get burned there? If they, we approve the special use, don't ask them what kind of sign they come with, and then they come up with a, a message that's, board? But that's true of any, any special use in any district. Think about it. Post office or whatever, they want to change that to something that would require a special use. It's on a, it, it, that, that is less of, a, to me, less of an issue than the overall sign package that we're talking about here. It's a good point, but you're right, we don't know what that is. And in that case, what would happen is that then they would be governed by what we have in our code for, you know, brightness and all of those things that we probably need to look at based upon the new technologies that we have. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so a uh, continuation to a date certain of? Uh, May 9th. May 9th. Yes. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Powers, second by Commissioner Yednick, Mr. Secretary. Commissioner Powers, so yes. Commissioner Yednick? Yes. Commissioner Blanova? Yes. Commissioner Creech? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Kalis? Yes. Chairman Rafato? Yes. Uh, do we, we don't have to close that, right? No. Correct. It's still open. Okay. Moving on, uh, and before I have somebody vote for approval of the minutes of March 28, 2019, uh, Commissioner Yednick has a couple of corrections. Yeah, I had one question on. Uh, it's on the, the Fresh Farms docket where we identify Mr. Victor Melnikov was present. I was just curious whether we needed to spell out his uh, relationship. I believe he was the architect. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's usually included, something like that, or it's not necessary. No. no. Okay. But then there was one correction. If you go to, uh, this was in the findings of facts and recommendation under the we were talking about the Spears bourbon burgers and beer. Um, no, I'm sorry, I wasn't there. Wait, where was it? Oh, here it is. It's on. Uh, it's actually on under the Chicago Auto Center uh, on page. Are there pages? Yeah, uh, page six of seven. Um, Commissioner Yednak questioned if the intent of the zoning code was included, and Mr. Robles confirmed this is how staff ha staff had always interrupted. I think oh. that should have been interpreted. Okay. Yep. Yep. So just a correction. <laughs> okay. That's it. So Mr. Chairman, I, I did email Steve with a correction too earlier in the week, and I, I did see it uh, when I came in today that it was corrected. So I just want to mention that. Great. Thank oh, you. Okay. If that's a procedure, I could have just emailed it. Either, it, it's <laughs> either way. Either way, Commissioner Yednick. Okay. A lot of times people come here and mention them, and then they're corrected before they're okay. out there. I, I didn't know if it had to be official. No, you don't have to. Okay. A motion to approve minutes of March 28, 2019 as amended. So moved. Second. Uh, take roll, please. Commissioner Powers, let's yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Blanova? Yes. Commissioner Creech? Abstain. Commissioner Kalis? Yes. Commissioner Yednick? Yes. And Chairman Rafato? Yes. Other business? Steve, anything? Uh, nothing tonight. Okay. I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm, um, I'm going to start with other business. Two things. One, um, there is a... Um, a water, I don't know, what, what would you call it, a water uh, tracking system that we use called AquaHawk. I don't know if anybody has ever used that. Uh, it, was pre it was presented by Mr. Jennings maybe a year ago or so that everybody can have access to and you can Mr. buy. Mr. Smith presented it. Did he? Yes, it was okay. in the finance department. Oh, okay. So anyway, um, it's, it's a system, it's 
link, you can go out to the uh, Village of Wheeling website and you log in, create an account, and they're looking for your account for your home or wherever you live. <coughs> and it, it shows your usage, your water usage. And I looked at it and I set up, uh, uh, you can set up levels, you know, get an email saying, hey, you use this much water, you're way over what you should use. So um, I was getting a bunch of those and I wasn't thinking much about it. And then um, two weeks ago, I got a letter from the village saying, hey, you know, based upon your usage, so they are tracking it, you might have a leaky toilet. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I've got three bathrooms. I weren't around. I didn't hear anything leaking. So, um, you know, I, I called the village. And I said, boy, you know, I just don't, I don't see anything. And they said, well, put some dye in there. I put some dye and let it go overnight. And I looked and nothing. Unfortunately, one of them, it was leaking so bad that the, the dye was just flowing right through it. <laughs> and if I would have looked closely, I would have seen that in the middle of the night, I was using two or three gallons of water an hour. Wow. Yeah. So found out, found the issue, and I fixed it. And, you know, my projected water bill was, went down immensely. So... Uh, for those here, and then also for those that are watching, go out to our website and uh, go out to the Village of Wheeling and just search on Aqua Hawk, log in, and start tracking and look over a daily basis. And if you're using water while you're sleeping, you probably have a leak somewhere, <laughs> as I do. So anyway, on, and that. And then on the next note, this is a little personal. Um, this... This could, uh, this could be my last meeting as chairman of the plan commission because on Monday, and the agenda is out, um, I am uh, being recommended to fill the position of Ken Brady as a trustee. That's good. And uh, it, I'm saying it could be uh, because they still have to vote on it. The uh, trustees have to vote on it. But if that does occur, uh, one, I would like to uh, thank the staff, uh, the staff that I've worked with, uh, Brooke and Steve and Andrew and, um, boy, I can't remember the first uh, director that was here when I started. <laughs> uh, and I actually go back to the Appearance Commission, Tom Fennell, but I, I'm not leaving. But then the current commission that's here right now and then uh, prior commissioners that I worked with, Terry, who's in the audience, Ken Brady, uh, Pam Dorban, Steve Bohm, Steve Boehm, uh, our bicycle guy, uh, Ray, Joe, and there are a host of others that were here, uh, Joe Vito, Ray Lang. And uh, I, I want to thank all of them. It was, this is a great commission to be on and I know that um, it will continue on to provide the quality that we have done um, and we have presented to the board and uh, this is the place to be in the village it, it really is um, though I'm, I, uh, I will be appointed to a tr as a trustee I will always look to this this commission as the leaders as to what we're doing within the village. And uh, for that, I, I want to thank you all. So on that note, uh, Commissioner Blanova. <laughs> Anything? I'm, I'm still in shock. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Bob, you're going to be a great fit there, for sure. And you will, I'm pretty sure it will work out great for you. But we will miss you for sure. Thank you. Mr. Kalis. Thank you. Congratulations. Um, it's not official yet. Congratulations so for the to opportunity to maybe, kind of, <laughs> right, someday, yeah. Yeah. maybe, uh, be a trustee. Um, I guess I would, I, well, we could take this offline, I guess, but do we draw straws for who fills that seat? Like, I'm not sure how it goes. It's from, a point, uh, the chairperson is appointed by the village president. Yep. Okay. Actually, gotcha. I, so is we it have, the village president or the village board? Village, village president? Village president with advice and consent of the village board. Right. Yes. Okay. Can we, <laughs> can any of us be appointed? Is it like, can, 
I mean, can you say you don't want to, technically? Any, I'm not saying <laughs> not. It's just interesting, like, if one of us is going to be appointed, like, oh, great, uh, I don't want to be. It will no, probably so. come from the village president. Okay, great. So I just don't know the proceedings there. So anyway, it would be a nice, uh, nice conversation for one of us. Um, I was going to, again, the, the continuance to next week, what, how does that go? As I don't know that I've, like, what, how is it going to open? What are we going to talk about as far as continuing the sign conversation? Isn't that, does that not usually turn into a workshop sort of thing? Or if? Well, in essence, we are working, workshopping it with, but under the auspices of a public, public hearing. Okay. So this can continue on for multiple meetings if we want. But in between the meetings, please don't, if you have some ideas, please send them to Steve. So okay. He doesn't come in here at the next meeting, May 9th, and be blinded by something that you thought of two weeks ago. That's what I was, I was right. wondering how much we, like, we should prepare, send well, to the staff. In any, in any meeting that we have, in any public hearing, if you have questions before the meeting, yep. shoot them to Steve okay. uh, because then he has time to prepare them. If, if, there's, if you have a valid question that he can potentially bring up in, in the meeting that we have it. That, okay. That's by nature yes. how we should be a uh, normal SOP. Correct. And, most, and he works pretty late at night too. Uh, <laughs> I found that. <laughs> I'm just, most plans are already pretty spelled out already by staff, which is wonderful, or by the petitioners. So I'm just, well, you know, there's more opportunity for us to make suggestions this time than usual because it's kind of a blank slate of ideas so that's, I'm just wondering what I should be thinking of and sending. It should be, but I, but I want to stress though, you should be thinking of that in any petition that comes up. Fair. Irrespective of being, in this case, petitioner being the village of Wheeling, if the petitioner is anyone, you, you need yep. to be thinking of that. Yes, our plans from when I started to now, simply because of the technologies that we can change things quicker and work through um, items quicker because of the technology we had. When when I started here, <laughs> we would get a packet pre iPads. We would get packets that were this thick of plans. Walk yeah. uphill backwards oh, yeah. to bring right. it here. Delivered were, by the police department. Right, delivered by yeah, exactly. <laughs> or sometimes we would pick them up, but they were big. And now with the technology we have, it's easier for us to access yeah, these things weeks. and look at things. So cool. it's imperative that we hit up Steve, hit up staff before, before the Thursday meeting. We used to have something that, you know, if we could get something to staff by, Tuesday. I think it was Monday afternoon or Tuesday afternoon, that they might be able to change something right. within the report that we have, that, that it shows because of the technology. So. Don't just think that it's just this text amendment that we can do that. We can do that for any petitioner that comes before us. So. Duly noted. Thank you. Uh, that's it for me. Thanks. Commissioner Powers. Jim, I hope you get it. Uh, you will be missed. Um, I've learned so much from you, and you've um, you know, treated me really well. And uh, everybody on this commission went respect uh, all over, even Petitioners that come, so uh, you will be missed, but thanks for everything you've done. Thank you. Here, here. Commissioner Johnson. I'll echo those comments, uh, but add, if this is the place to be, why are you <laughs> <laughs> And becoming one of them. <laughs> well, hopefully, hopefully we can continue, and hopefully it will be seamless. <laughs> but this is the basis, the Plant Commission is the basis of what goes before the village board. They take our input very seriously. And, and I, of course, will if I'm appointed to that position. Uh, but it's something that I, it's something I, I'm not sure I said that I always wanted to be, you know, a trustee. But over the last number of years, it seemed like something that I wanted to be. But the, the, the people that were running are, are great, and I never wanted to do anything in that manner. Um, and and the, the board that's on there is a great board, so that's where I'm at. Don't leave your campaign signs out all over the place. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's still a lot around town. I spent, I spent 
three hours picking up campaign signs. <laughs> so, uh, Commissioner Yednick. Uh, yeah, I, I'm confident you'll get the appointment, um, so I'll prematurely congratulate you. Um, and I will miss your leadership. I know I've only been here for a short period of time, but uh, I'm personally disappointed that we that I can't learn more from you uh, on this commission, but I'll look forward to you serving on the, the board. Um, and I want to be the first one to nominate Commissioner Kalis to take over the role. <laughs> he, say, he seemed like he was anxious. I said, I've said too much. <laughs> Can anybody get it? <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Creech. Jim, I also would like to thank you for all the wisdom that you've brought to this commission, and um, I learned a lot from you. And I don't want to jinx you, but I want to tell you I'm rooting for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I've, I've learned a lot, and as you, I've learned a lot from um, previous plan commission members that were here, not the least being uh, Terry Stylin, who's in the audience, and Pam and Ken Brady, and uh, they, you, they bring a wealth of information, and I, I know this board will continue, this commission will continue down that path. So thank you. Anything else? Nothing? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. <laughs>